everybody, and welcome to Taking Control, the ADHD podcast on Rash Pixel FM. I'm Pete Wright, and right over there is Nikki Kinzer. Hello, everyone. Hello, Pete Wright. How are you, Nikki Kinzer? You had a big weekend. I did. I had a great weekend. I uh, got to see my favorite performer, Jason Mraz. Ugh, Jason. J. Mraz in the house. Yeah. He was great. He's awesome. He was everything you wanted him to be. Again. You've seen I, him like again. 19 times now, right? <laughs> I know. I don't even know how many times I've seen him. But yeah. yes, it was it was fantastic. It was him it and Rainy like, Jane. It seems like he only comes great. to your neighborhood. Well, he probably knows I'm a super fan. <laughs> <laughs> So if he didn't come to Oregon, he he knows that I where, would probably be stalking him. So. Where did you see him? Where where does he play uh, down there? Well, he let's see. Last week he was in Eugene, actually at the Holt Center on Wednesday, mm-hmm. October thirtieth, and then he was in Portland uh, on Friday, November first, and that was at the Arlen Schnitzer. The Schnitzer, yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's where I went because I went with friends okay. uh, from college. So, All right. uh, yeah, it was a good time. That's great. It was a really good time. That's great. So, great, great, great. Yes, I had what a great fun. weekend. Awesome. You did not, though. You uh, had a weekend of technology horror. You know, I'll tell you what it was. It was ups and downs. Uh, I My yeah. MacBook Pro, I have a MacBook Pro that is super powered, right? It's my primary work machine. I do all my video production on it. I do everything. And they decided, it's it's a year old, and Apple decided, we're going to make the thinnest keyboard we can possibly make. And it turns out that making a thin keyboard makes it incredibly unreliable. And so it's been into the shop twice. It is uh, now I'm sending it away so they can hopefully just give me a brand new keyboard that they have fixed these problems in. Uh, and so I'm waiting on that. And that has impact. I'm I'm working on a horse and buggy of a computer, but the keyboard is amazing on this little seven year old MacBook Air. Uh, Much better than what you It were is incredible. It, it's just yeah. a, tr- a tank. It's what I want out of a keyboard that I pound <laughs> on all day. Um, but the upside is I I did I did a, a photography. I did a shoot for a dear friend for her daughter's senior photos. And I was doing it as a gift. And mm-hmm. uh, like I was just, the time was as a gift. But she ended up giving me a gift card to the Apple store. You know, I'm an Apple fan. What are you going to say? Oh, and yes. so, but I couldn't do anything re- responsible with this gift card. You can only buy Apple stuff with this gift card. So I bought these new AirPods Pro yes. that just came out last weekend, the noise canceling and everything. They're amazing. They're the, I, the, I used to love my little Edemotix, like high, high end wired earbuds. And I had custom mm-hmm. molds made for them and they totally isolated sound. And they were really, I mean, they're studio monitors, right? You put them up over your ear and stick them in there. I right, love right. those. And they died and like literally after five years disintegrated. And uh, so, but these are the first time I have wireless earbuds that feel that good in my ears. They just feel good great. The noise canceling is wonderful. I don't know if they're quite powerful enough to to do an airplane trip, but uh, right. so far, if I'm sitting in a coffee shop and I turn on that noise canceling, I it's like You're I'm good. not even there. Yeah, it's beautiful. So I'm very happy That's with great. these. And they really stick in your ear. Like if you ever had trouble getting AirPods to stay in your ear, these right. stay in your ear because they have the rubber tips on them. So uh, I'm, oh. I, am, I, I am a man bereft because I don't have 100% sunshiny, wonderful things to say, but at least I have that. You uh, have before that. I, I take my com- old it. computer in and put it on train tracks. That's right. Yeah. That's right. All right. Let's move on. Yeah. Let's get this. Sto- let's do let's it. get this show started. Oh, we got some <laughs> stuff today. We're doing a little bit of. We we've got some things that have come up in your uh, life and practice, and we have some things coming up. And it's a kind of a feedback episode from our month of of emotion. Uh, in uh, what was last month? October. Goodness, it's November now. Yes. Uh, before we dig into that, head over to takecontroladhd.com. Get to know us a little bit better. You can listen to the show right there on the website, or subscribe to the mailing list, and we will send you an email each time a new episode. Episode is released. Connect with us on Twitter or Facebook at Take Control ADHD. You know, we had an amazing month of fantastic guests, and the guests yeah, come to did. this show because we continue to grow and because they know that our community is the best ADHD community. And and part of the reason that it's the best ADHD community is because it's so supportive of what Nikki and I do here. If you have ever been touched by the guests, by the work that we've done, by the insights that these wonderful people bring to you and your life with ADHD, head over to patreon.com slash 
The ADHD Podcast and consider joining, supporting the show, and you will be you will be taking part in the future of the ADHD community that continues to grow. We certainly appreciate it. It allows us to do new things. It allows us to sustain uh, the work that we do here and continue to prioritize, frankly, the ADHD podcast over other stuff uh, and uh, that, that earns us a living and puts food on the table. So, um, you know, in addition to that support, you also get access to this fantastic Discord online community, to our members-only Uh, Facebook page, and you get access to the weekly live stream of our podcast recording session, and uh, uh, our uh, it's just all this wonderful stuff. Patreon.com slash the ADHD podcast to learn more. We uh, hope you will consider supporting this community. All right, Nikki, reflections of the week. Where would you like to start? Actually, the last few weeks. Yeah. Last few weeks. Yeah. So you mentioned we had some great, great guests on the show. And uh, we we dug into some really important subjects, especially around emotions and, and ADHD. And so today, I thought it'd be great for us to share some of the comments that we received through Discord, share some of our own um, observations, mm-hmm. answer a couple questions that people had about it. Um, but before we get to that, I do want to talk about something that's come up uh in a few of my sessions recently, uh, it, with conversations with with coaching clients about seasonal depression, uh, so this is otherwise known as SAD. It's a seasonal affective disorder. Are you familiar with what oh, I'm talking about? Yeah, and boy, we're in the middle of it too. Weather well, changes, we're in the starting sky gets of it. dark. Yeah, oh, yeah. you can all. It's like it happens overnight. It feels like. I mean, you can the season changes, and I can already, I can already oh, feel well, it. Yeah. Especially with the with the fall back, so yeah. now it's going to get darker sooner, and uh, yeah, usually um, it it starts anywhere from October and, and ends into the it goes into the winter months, and so it is. Uh, what I want to do today really is just to give you guys, uh, our listeners, some information about what it is and uh, what 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 causes it, what are some of the symptoms, and also tell you a little bit about how ADHD is related to it, and. Uh, um, if you feel like this is something that you have suffered in the past or something that you feel could happen to you, then, you know, we definitely want you to reach out and get help from your doctor. Uh, a lot of people will call it like the winter blues, mm-hmm. right? I've heard that before. Um, it is definitely a type of depression that is related to the changes in seasons. And uh, like I said, it usually starts in the fall and, and continues into the winter months until we get some spring weather and probably depending on where you are in the country, there's probably more of this in Oregon than there is in Florida. It's mm-hmm. my guess. I don't know, but, uh, you know, it, it certainly does de- depend on where you are. Have you ever experienced this? Is that too personal of a question? Not too personal. Yeah, I, I absolutely have. And I, I think I do as a result of, you know, it, it, it is a result of uh, ADHD and anxiety stuff, you know, like mm-hmm. I, I, it is, it's the it comes at the end of the path when I realize I don't have the strength uh, or the wherewithal or the wit to uh, pull myself out of, um, you know, the the pain that comes from um, an ang- an anxiety or an ADHD day, you know, or a week mm-hmm. or a month. And it just, it extends that experience uh, much right. longer than it should. And so, um, you know, I, and I went to the doctor, uh, uh, you know, for it and I, I've been treated for it. And, you know, honestly, the result for me was uh, a pretty simple and it was, it, it was rooted in a catastrophically, this is what they wrote on my, um, on my chart, catastrophically low levels of vitamin D for living in, yeah. in Oregon. And once Oregon. I, yeah, once I, I changed that, I, w- I was able to have a little bit more energetic resilience to some of the things that normally would get me down and keep me down during right, that right. long gray season. And that is definitely one of the treatments is to increase your vitamin D. Yeah. Uh, we'll get to that in just a second. But some of the symptoms that people might feel is definitely, um, you know, we all have kind of blue days, right? So maybe it's it's uh, raining outside and we don't we're not feeling really motivated and, and we're just going to kind of sit in all day. But what's different here is that it's feeling depressed 
most of the time, like every day. It's not just one day. It's like I'm feeling this way day, you know, day after day. Mm -hmm. And one of the key components to really look for is if you're not interested in doing the things that you usually like to do and the things that you love to do, that's a pretty uh, big red flag to be checking in with yourself and seeing what's going on. Uh, Low energy oversleeping or not sleeping enough. So it could actually go one way or the other. Appetite changes, weight gain um, are some of the symptoms that you might see. Some of the causes is the circadian rhythm is off because of the reduced level of sunlight. So for us, gosh, what what time does it start getting dark? Like four thirty, five o'clock. Oh, geez, like. yeah, uh, early. Yeah. So all of this is disrupting your body's internal clock. So this really is something that's going on inside you, right? It's a chemical thing that's going on. You're not um, getting as much of that serotonin that you need, right? Those levels drop in your brain, which affects your mood. We know that mm-hmm. melatonin levels may be changed, which it has everything to do with you know sleep patterns and your mood. So with the serotonin, the melatonin, the circadian rhythm, there's a lot of stuff going on here that could, you know, get you into this depression. I just checked 656 sunrise in the morning, 454 p.m. sunset this afternoon. That's yes, early. That is really early. Especially really for early. living for those of us uh, living and I know it, you know once you get to where we are in a latitude, it feels really strange. Canada, Alaska, you know, it's just otherworldly. But for people who get used to that short summer stretch where the sun sets at like 9.30. Nine, (laughs) yeah, right. This is is an adjustment and it's important to acknowledge that is, that's a lot of hours of the day that you don't, you don't get recharged. Right. Right. So some of the treatment that we already talked about is increasing your vitamin D. And that was actually the very first thing that my doctor said. Um, I just had a medication checkup with her um, a couple of weeks ago, and she was one of the people that brought this up and said, you know, definitely be taking your vitamin D, increase it if you need to, need to, but be aware of this. In the research I did, uh, sometimes the first line of treatment is light therapy. And that is actually having a special light box on within the first hour of waking up each day. And she actually mentioned this after the vitamin D uh, and said, you know, you might want to think about having a light box uh, when you're having breakfast in the morning or something like, you know, wherever it would make sense. I am not very familiar with these light boxes. Have you ever been around them or seen them? Or yes, uh, in, in fact, there there is a company that makes full spectrum like natural daylight lighting uh, named Ott O T T the Ott Light, and you can go to ottlight.com and get bulbs that are specially designed like full spectrum lights, so that you are um, you're getting that right sort of daylight light balance uh you know i have light bulbs that my that also can achieve the full spectrum light so i can change scenes that that actually give me that full spectrum daylight light balance it's important to have those and and you know at least spend some time i, I my understanding is i'm not a doctor what i've been told right. by my doctor is i need to spend more time in full spectrum light um you know it which is a a substitute if not the best substitute for, um, you know, being outside in the sun. Um, yeah. And so, you know, these are, these are good for that kind of sad self-care. Absolutely. Absolutely. Of course, you can uh, talk to your doctor about medication. You can do talk therapy. Uh, cognitive behavioral therapy, CBT, has also been a treatment that has helped with people uh, thinking about changing maybe some of their negative thoughts or behaviors, identifying what those are and, and changing that mindset a little bit when it's kind of gloomy outside. Uh, when you can, definitely get outside, open up your blinds. That was something that I thought was a you know really just an easy thing to do, but something that we could definitely forget to do if we're kind of feeling low. So open up those blinds, exercise regularly. This is so hard to do when you're not motivated. 
Um, and believe me, I am the first one to admit to that. It is so hard to do. Yeah. Um, but I'm going to encourage myself and everybody else out there that's listening that it, even if we can just get a couple jumping jacks in, a little bit of a walk around the house, whatever it is to, to get us moving, it does make a difference and it does uh, make us feel better. So go for a walk um, around the block. The just things. circle the block yeah. once. Take you 10 yeah, minutes. That's right. If that. So it's not, I'm not saying go to the gym because right. I know I'm not probably. So I'm not, right. I, I should, and I probably, you know, maybe I will someday, but I'm being realistic here. Right. So, <laughs> uh, now this is what I thought was interesting as I, I did try to research a little bit about the connection between um, SAD and ADHD. And there hasn't been a lot of studies that go into great depth between the link. Um, however, what they have studied, they do show that ADHD um, folks are more likely to experience SAD than the general population. Women are more prone too sad in general. Uh, women with ADHD are more more vulnerable to sad than men with ADHD. And it was discovered that those with inattentive ADHD were most prone to seasonal changes, which really makes a lot of sense when you think of uh, the motivation piece of uh, inattentive ADHD. Right. And so, um, you know, nothing really earth shattering here, but it was kind of interesting to see that, you know, those were the things that they did find. It's, uh, you know, the thing I, uh, the thing that gives me a little bit of relief around seasonal affective disorder is that so much of it is chemical. And even right. in your, in your darkest kind of periods of seasonal affective disorder, like there are things you can take and change and eat that, that can give you a leg up, at least, you know, again, speaking for myself, that's been my experience when I'm feeling like I go on a week straight where I'm, I really struggle, like getting my feet on the floor out of bed. You know, if, if I can just change some of my diet and get walking just a little bit and dramatically increase my vitamin D, it doesn't take long to, to find a ray of light. Uh, and, and so that's, that's really positive, right? Keep, keep a, right. an eye Absolutely. on that. There are things you can change in your life to, to help you get to the other side of that. And if all else fails, you know, consider a sunnier climate. Yeah. That's legit. That's, you know, there are a lot I mean, of people who evacuate the Pacific Northwest West because of During exactly this. Months. Yeah. Right. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So absolutely. anyhow, so that's our little update on SAD. Hopefully that yes. helps some folks that are in your circles. And uh, now we've got some feedback stuff. We have some feedback. So I had a, a question actually come from a client who loved the episode on RSD, uh, the rejection sensitivity disorder episode with Dr. William Dotson. Um, but one thing that she, the one thing that she was not clear about was the specific strategies for pushing past the rejection sensitivity and what were my suggestions. And uh, one of the very first things that I, that I, responded back to her was letting her know that I, I don't think it's necessarily pushing past it. Um, I, I got the impression that you're still going to feel those things. It's still going to feel heavy and, and, uh, strong. Um, what I got out of the conversation is that it's not so much pushing past it, but accepting that it is part of the ADHD. Um, there's nothing wrong with you. And what we're looking for is to have a quicker recovery time. Right. And so instead of having it be something that really bugs you for a week, maybe it's something that, you know, you hang on to for a couple of days, but you're able to recover quicker. Is that what you well, I think that's that's absolutely one piece that I got out of it. The other is uh, being aware of it and having a name for it also gives you yes. the ability to, um, for lack of a better word, dodge it. Right, mm -hmm. that that there is an experience where you feel like, okay, I've just done something or put something out in the world, or I have a relationship with a friend, and I know now, I I can sort of start to to see the future a little bit. Like I I know that there is risk for me in a certain scenario, and I can dodge and weave and feel better about you know I ignoring the signals that lead to my own interpretation of rejection, uh, mm -hmm. and and kind of alleviate some of that sensitivity. So I think there's a there's a combined effect once you once you know it once you are practiced in the language of rejection sensitivity i think you have more of an experience to be able to both like uh, dodge it on the front end and recover more quickly on the on the back end um so 
Well, and I like what you said. It actually gives it a name. And so something that I noticed in our Discord feed is that there was a lot of conversation around just gosh, I really felt this RSTD today. Like, Mm -hmm. you know, this really was strong today. This was my experience. And so they were actually able to really understand it from that perspective and not just feel bad or feel, you know, it was like they were able to, yeah, yeah, they were able to kind of put something to it. And, uh, and then of course everybody supports them because they understand they, they get it. And that was the other piece that I really got out of Dr. Dotson's, uh, conversation is that you're not alone. It's important that we, that we understand that this is not something that you are only going through. There's nothing wrong with you. Right. And uh, it is certainly a part of ADHD. He was very clear that like 99.9% of people with ADHD are going to have RSD. Yeah. So we have to, to, to certainly recognize that. Uh, the other things as far as more practical strategies is, that, you know, I think he talked about, well, I know he did. He talked about medication, which is going to regulate those body chemicals. He talked about therapy, CBT, but also made it very clear that he doesn't necessarily believe that the CBT is going to work without the medication. Yeah. Um, yeah. He, he was a pretty, pretty strict advocate for that, that, um, yes. that was important for yes, him. And I'm, I, I'm curious with how that has uh, ultimately shaken out. I, you know, I, I'm certainly not equipped to be an advocate one way or the other, but I'm, no. I do find it, uh, his perspective and experience in the field is certainly uh, lends interesting weight. Uh, to well, that. and I think that that actually brings up a, a, a point that I would want to express to our listeners is that, you know, this is his research. This is his opinion. This is what he has come to find. And, and we are not the experts of medication mm-hmm. or doing the research he does. Right. So we're looking at what he has to say. And uh, and that's what we're relaying to our listeners. So it's, it's a different um well, it's not even a different perspective. I mean, we're not pro. Yeah, or we're just sharing his. Nay. Just sharing. Yeah, his, we're right. just talking about it. And uh, one of the things that I thought was really interesting, and I appreciate, was the was the coaching. He really was an advocate for coaching and how mm-hmm. important it is to uh, teach. You know, teach yourself those skills that the pills aren't going to teach you the skills. So right. he wasn't only just medication focused. He knows that there's something that has to be, you know, next. What's next is what he would say. Right. And um, I, th- I thought that was really great. Really loved having him on the show. I would love to have him come back. I know he does a lot of stuff with sleep too. And so yeah. I'd love to have him come back and talk about that too. Yeah. So that was great. Now the follow-up episode um, after Dr. Dotson was James Ochoa. And I was really excited about having him come on for many reasons, because I love him yes. as, a, as a person. I think he's fantastic. But he had such an interesting story to share. And that was, you know, his whole experience with the audio book. And I thought, gosh, what a great follow up from the conversation we just had with Dr. Dotson about rejection sensitivity disorder. Yeah. I mean, this is the storm that James is going through. Did you feel like that was a good connection? Well, I did. I thought that was great follow-up, especially because he is a practitioner, right? A, a, a therapist in the space of ADHD, also living with ADHD, right? The the, the sort mm-hmm. of onion of layers that that we can peel back with his experience and that he is, you know, vulnerable enough and willing to share, I think makes him a, a really special sort of exemplar in this in this area. Uh, and and he gave, I, I know he gave me a lot to think about, um, you know, mm-hmm. speci- especially related Related to that recovery piece that we were talking about earlier, like right. when you get hit with this and you are gripping the counter because you just don't know what's next, what is the first step that you're going to take to be to allow yourself to let go of the counter and move forward and and stop mm-hmm. the world from shaking? That's what I I got out of that and and uh, uh, but it's also interesting as follow up. Like here's a guy I don't I don't know um, James. Uh, med- history of medication and self-medicating, right? I, I don't know if he's on any medication or or not, but here he is specifically in an RSD scenario storm, and mm-hmm. uh, and he has he is able to talk to us about the accommodations and skills that he puts into place to move forward and move forward, admittedly, pretty quickly. Like he recovered and had mm-hmm. a fix to his audiobook out in no time. Mm-hmm. Well, and that was definitely part of the recovery, yeah. which I thought was so fascinating was the, 
was the taking action. Yeah, taking control to recover control taking, of the scenario. Yes, having that that small piece of action that that's going to make you feel like you're getting out of it, right. which is is really helpful. Uh, so then, who? Let's see, who did we have after that? That was then it was Doctor Ari Tuckman, Tuckman, correct? Yes, that's yeah, right. That's right. Yeah, and uh, he actually has an article that he wrote with Doctor Dotson. Now we didn't really talk about this, but they actually co-wrote an article about rejection sensitivity disorder. That's right. And uh, had some different ways of. Uh, dealing with it, some different strategies. And so um, we didn't connect those two, but they are connected. So I want to make sure people understand that. Um, and, you know, when we did the emotion theme, it's interesting because we try uh, we try to kind of have a theme in the month. Now, sometimes that works and sometimes it doesn't. Like November <laughs> is going to be really kind of cuckoo, just to be honest with you guys. There isn't really a huge theme going on in November. We do our best. We'll see if one emerges <laughs> by the time yeah, December comes around. Yeah. It'll all, it'll be a hindsight be. theme. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but all of these were just really interesting interviews because they do have to do so much with just the emotional piece of our, uh, as humans. Right. I mean, right. now we're talking to Dr. Ari Tuckman about, uh, our relationships and the sex in our relationship and what makes happy cup, you know, what makes those couples happy and, uh, really important things that I know all of our listeners really care a lot about because it, it, it is so much to do with everything in their life. Now, again, Dr. Ari Tuckman definitely has the research. He's he's done uh, the the work, um, the surveys, everything that he's done to put this book together. And not everybody's going to, you know, necessarily agree or uh, with everything that he says, and that's okay. Um, again, we want different people to come in and. Uh, talk about their research, talk about their books and give that information out to you. If you um, then need to take that to your own doctor or therapist, then we hope that you do and, and kind of figure out, you know, what is best for you. Yeah. Well, and here's a, this is one of those that's a terrific resource based on a, a, a reasonably significant sample size of ADHD respondents. And that's what we, right. that's what I think his, uh, you know, his book is all about. It's a sharing and experience and coming as close to uh, something that is a shared experience with those living with ADHD and sexual relationships uh, as he can come to, based on his experience as both a, a, a therapist and a, a, a sex therapist, right? I mean, that's, that's right, right. what he does is talk to people about sex, sex addiction, porn and ADHD and their relationship to it. And and so, Absolutely. Um, you know, I, I think his perspective is is fascinating and um, I do too. illuminating. So and so hopefully helpful others because agree. I, I hope so too, because I think it's so helpful to see that it's not, it's not just what happens in the bedroom, but it's what's happening outside of the bedroom. And that has so much to do with how close you are in your relationship. How are you taking care of your relationship? And that's a lot of what I got out of his conversation, you know, that, that positive attending, how to fight well, taking care of each other, taking care of yourself, you know, all of those things are, are just so important. And so really appreciated, um, his, him coming on the show and I've, talking about all that. I've really been struggling with one, one of the comments we got in, in the community, a community member uh, shared, um, a, an experience about, you know, living and having a sexual relationship with a, a partner for many years when both partners have ADHD. And mm -hmm. I've really been, been sort of struggling with that kind of one of those back of mind, uh, comments because, um, that's not something that Dr. Tuckman talks about. Uh, mm -hmm. and in fact, he's quite explicit about the fact that his research is only focusing on one ADHD member of a couple. And, mm -hmm. uh, and, and I think that limitation is one that uh, can be a little bit frustrating, you know, especially in, the, in our, our member who is commenting and says, you know, there are, all, there are so many other issues that come into play when both uh, partners have, uh, are living with ADHD. And how do you build a, a thriving sort of relationship that it, uh, a physical relationship uh, that also enhances the emotional relationship and vice versa when you're having executive functioning and attentive disorder uh, issues. And um, I'm, I feel like that is an area where it would be worth continuing the discussion over the next year, like have, mm -hmm. have Dr. Tuckman mm -hmm. back to talk about some of those things more explicitly, because 
I feel like our community is likely one that has ADHD, same ADHD partners. <laughs> right. It's pretty common. <laughs> you know, yeah. I, I bet yeah. it's pretty common. And uh, yeah. I, I appreciate those who are willing to continue to share about that experience. It's not one that I uh, have experience with, and I think it's important. All right. So let's see, Pete, I'm going to have you take on this next question. All right. Uh, when one aspect of your life goes into a tough time, how do you stop that cascading into every part of your life? Not to be dramatic, but for my own example, my relationship life has been rough lately, which in turn has affected my health and my work. Separating each and minimizing the spread of the storm is tough. I try to think through it logically, but we all know how that works. <laughs> Yeah, we get it. Uh, yeah, what do you think about this one? It's so true. Oh my gosh! Yeah. Like I, I can. I'm just thinking about my own, my own life, like my own little bubble. When one thing goes off, it certainly affects everything else. As much as I would love to try to compartmentalize, you know, work and home and and relationship with husband versus relationship with kids, it's like it's just no. It's uh, it all is sort of. Yeah. A mush of togetherness. <laughs> yeah. I I think so. I for me it's it you know and speaking specifically to when the relationship gets challenged. And and for me that right. looks like um you know when we both get so busy that there is just no time for intimacy or affection or we hit the mm -hmm. pillow and we're both so exhausted that we just fall straight mm -hmm. to sleep in spite of our best intents like those things right. when that suffers for me everything starts to fall apart because mm -hmm. uh, it, it, it goes back to sort of love languages. Or you, we've talked about love languages before, I think, on the show, right? And, and uh, the physicality is just is one sort of love language. And for me, that's very important. I'm, I'm a big hugger and, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm a physical guy. Uh, and, um, and so when, you know, when we just get too busy for that level of expression for intimacy in our relationship when our sex life is just put on kind of a back burner i get mm -hmm. i get depressed like i right. i just, and i i can't even put that to to i i can't make a reason for that like i can't like i i can't describe it when i'm in the middle of mm -hmm. it but uh generally my life turns around on a dime <laughs> When, yeah. <laughs> when we figure out a routine that works better, and and that's right, uh, right. that's something that took a long time to recognize uh, that that it was in fact leaking into the rest of my life, and um, and, and so I, I totally I resonate. Actually, I resonate with it too, and I think you bring up a really good point that if there's a way that this listener could figure out, you know, what's that first step to work on that relationship and get out of that rough zone. Um, and at least get it to be a little bit better where they're connecting and, you know, feeling close to each other. I, I would, you know, just as you said, it yeah. can change in a dime. So it would it then that affect his health and work. If it's a domino effect, it probably yeah. would. That's so, that's certainly my experience. And I think there is there's something really um it, it, the the challenge that we had, and this was a number of years ago when we started trying to figure this stuff out, was that uh, I had to essentially be much more clear about my requests, making clear requests mm -hmm. that say, you know, my I'm in order for me to live a complete and healthy kind of emotional life in and out of the marriage. I need this, right? I need to, it, mm -hmm. it's, it's not like asking permission to have more sex, but it's asking right. for acknowledgement that a healthy sex life it may be more important to me because of my, just the way I'm wired than it is mm -hmm. to her. And mm -hmm. it, even though it is to her clearly, but it's, you know, yeah. she just doesn't, might not see that connection to a healthy sex life, to a healthy work life that I do right. just because of that's my love language. And so once we had that conversation and it was easier to say like, okay, this is, this is where I am right now. I'm pretty depressed. You know, we mm -hmm. need to take a little time and, and I need you. We need to go on vacation. I honey. need you to make some time. <laughs> vacation, <ourselves>. Nikki. <laughs> we need to just like, we put it on the calendar. And on the counter, I'm yeah. not, I'm actually not joking. Do you, you ever see that? Is there a Fly to the Concords video, uh, a song that they did in their TV show, old HBO show? Fly to the Concords was brilliant. You can find it on YouTube. It's called Business yeah. Time. It's a music video. And oh, yes. It's business. 
Right? <laughs> it's business time. Oh, it's time for business. It's time for business time. Ooh. And it's all about <laughs> how his wife, like, puts on sweats and he knows that business time is over. Business hours yeah, are over. Happening. Over, baby. <laughs> you know, it's just the best song ever. And we laughed about that for, like, a year. And then we realized, oh, my God, we're business time. And so we actually started putting business time on our calendar and sending invites to each other. <laughs> Oh, like, how cute. But you know what? It's a, it's adorable, and B, yeah. it works. Like that's a thing right, that at right. least helps me express in my love language, and it gives me energy for other things. Um, that's right. That's right. Yeah. So that's great. Anyway, enough Little about me. Little personal information. You got about it. Pete Wright. It's time for business, baby. <laughs> See, this is what do- <laughs> this is what Doctor Tuckman does. He yeah. opens up these doors what he wants. for us to talk about this mm-hmm. stuff. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's great. Well, now we had another uh, question that came through, and it was sort of a situation, and it certainly goes uh, back to these emotional pieces of ADHD. Unable to let arguments go was sort of the title of it. Um, So I'm going to uh, try to just summarize what what this person was saying. Um, The issue is basically having the inability to let simple arguments go. So sometimes they can come off a little bit harsh or brash. Um, they want to speak their mind. And so they're going to be much more likely to tell someone to stop being, you know, stop being an idiot, stop being stupid, whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, and then they get in trouble for it again and again. Um, because obviously most people probably don't want to be called stupid or an idiot. Um, in this problem, uh, it, or he's asking, is this a problem with most of us um, with ADHD or is this more specific to him? Um, perhaps offer some tips and strategies toward overcoming or at least managing this kind of behavior when it comes to the ADHD brain. So the first thing that kind of came to my mind when we're looking at ADHD is the impulsiveness, right? The impulsive behavior that's happening here. And that's a pretty clear sign to me. You may have heard people say that they talk without a filter. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about ADHD specifically, but you may have a friend in your friend group that says, oh yeah, he'll just say whatever he wants to say. He has no filter. Right. Um, and that's just thinking, you know, or, or speaking before you're really thinking about how this might actually come across. Um, the other thing that I'm seeing here on an ADHD level is that RSD is coming into play, right? Because if you're feeling criticized, or you're feeling like that person, you know, who you think is being an idiot thinks you're an idiot, then you're going to be more likely to react. Right. So here we've got this impulsive behavior. We have RSD coming into play. Um, you know, I, I think that as far as like, is this more, is this common with ADHD? I mean, I think the spectrum of ADHD is so big that you're going to find people that, yes, they relate to this and they're going to find people that, that, maybe don't say anything at all because they want to be that people pleaser and they don't want that confrontation. So they end up, you know, just bottling up. So I think it's a wide, you know, it's a wide spectrum to kind of say, you can't just really say yes or no when it comes to that. Well, what are are your thoughts? It's interesting. I just had a conversation with somebody living with ADHD and, and they had forgotten to take their medication on a particular day and they went into work and had this and, and sat down and, and were working on a project team meeting and, and, uh, the person sitting next to them also lives with ADHD and passed over some work to this uh, young woman. And she said, um, she said, I'm, I'm sitting there thinking, I just like his, his question to me was, what do you think of this thing? X, Y, Z, whatever it is, this widget logo, whatever it was. And she said, why? And immediately she says in my head, I thought, Oh my God, why did I just say that? Like, the tone was off. The word was not appropriate. Uh, what What am I possibly thinking? Letting that come out of my mouth in in such an impulsive way. Oh my god! I forgot to take my medication. And then he says, "Well, I just wanted to know what you thought of this work I just did." And she said, "Oh, well, why do you want to know from me?" And then she said, "Oh my god! I'm cringing at myself. How did that word? Those <laughs> words just come out of my mouth? I'm like dissociated from my body Who now. Who person? is this person?" Yeah. And and then I got all squeamish in my skin. I couldn't. Cr- I could. I was like itchy. I felt super uncomfortable. I had to stand up. And because this other person lives with ADHD, he said, "Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. You're feeling this way right now. Like I totally Aww. get it. I relate. You're okay. Let's take a beat." Oh, 
I love that. I that's value so your nice. opinion, and I would like to hear what you have to say about this work. And that's all. There is nothing else oh, embedded in this. that's fantastic. It is. It's really fantastic. Yeah, but that's, that's kind of the really example. Nice it doesn't have to be you calling somebody an idiot to be an example of impulsivity getting the better of you, right? It doesn't have right. to. It's it's anything that you that you have an awareness that the words that are coming out of your mouth are not words that you would like to take credit for. <laughs> Right, <laughs> you don't right. want your <laughs> reputation built on those words, and uh, yes. and and so I feel like that's a that's a legit thing, and it's a legit muscle to have to to really build and work on. Well, and I, awareness. I'm glad that you bring that up because I think that's a big piece of this. Is that you know if this is an issue where you feel like this is happening in your life a lot, mm -hmm. and you're getting into arguments a lot. And you're maybe regretting what you're saying to people, or maybe you don't regret it, but you know that this is just not maybe the healthiest way to have yeah. relationships with people. Um, and how are they responding to you? Are they a little bit more hesitant to be around you or whatever? Those are the things that you have to kind of pay attention to and start seeing, you know, how is how is the behavior affecting relationships? Yeah. Are you losing relationships over it? Because, um, you know, I want to be honest. It's like I see some of these people that, you know, they do like Facebook, not Facebook, but any social media, especially people. It's so easy to just poke, 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 poke. And and the arguments and the, the conversations go way too long. And it's annoying. I just don't even engage in it. Mm -hmm. I'll just get out of it. Um, but that's that's, you know, what you have to really think about is your closest relationships and yeah. how that's being affected. Well, and um, and to practice, you can practice it actually on social media, right? You sure. can be the person yeah. to can let you things go. Away? You can yeah. be the person to make your point and then move along and and see how yeah. that feels. Like that's a that's a great practice ground to to keep in your mind. Am, am I talking to people on the internet the same way I would talk to a coworker or my brother or sister or my mom or dad? If they were in front of if me. If they were standing mm -hmm. right there. Yeah. Yeah. Do that. Well, and something that just actually when you were saying that it, it, it what is triggering you you know if 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 there are certain things that really trigger you and a lot of people it's politics sometimes it's religion um those really hot topics then you know you may want to think about avoiding some of those conversations mm -hmm. or you know getting out of them you know in a in a respectful way before you do say anything that you regret um so yeah, anyway perfect. just another thing to kind of kind of think about we All right. One Let's more. see, Pete. Do we have anything else? What else do more. we have here? Do we? Yes. All right. Here All we right. go. I feel they have taken, uh, they, uh, this is a, a piece of a longer uh, question for feedback. I feel they've taken, they being our guests, have taken very different approaches to describe what in many ways is related to the same core issue, the emotional impact from living with ADHD, but did so a bit in isolation without recognizing or discussing the findings of the others. Perhaps it is unfair to expect them all to be working off some unifying theory of everything ADHD, but I believe we should look at concepts such as RSD and EDS as related. And EDS is the emotional... Um, Distress syndrome. Distress syndrome, yeah. which is what James Ochoa right. um, talks about. Yes, yeah. which which is is good. I mean, I, I well, I, what's your what's your perspective on this comment? Well, I think that uh, when and and I did respond um, back to the to the listener. You know, I think that it's true. I mean, you know, they do all have very different approaches. Um, but there's when when I guess what I don't agree with. And it's not even that I don't agree with it. It's I guess I don't see it the same way. The same core issue. To me, there is not the same core issue. Um, when I'm looking at the emotional impact from living with ADHD, I see so many different layers of that and so many different ways that that can connect to something else. And so that's the only thing that I would say is that they all did come in with their with what we asked them to come and talk about. And, uh, and they are coming from different viewpoints because they're talking about different pieces of that emotional impact. Right. It's not just one big bowl of a topic that everybody can talk in the same way. 
I don't know. Is that, am I being clear when I'm yeah. saying no, that? No, I, I think so too. I think this is one of those that's a, a very complex issue. And I think it is hard on a, a non serialized podcast with hundreds of episodes uh, that to cover a, a unifying theory of ADHD. That doesn't, uh, it, you know, that doesn't exist in my experience. Is there one? I, I've I mean, never is seen there it. a unifying? I don't, yeah, I, I don't, don't think that's so. what I'm getting at. I yeah. don't think there is. And, uh, and I don't think there is on anything depression, uh, anxiety. Right. Disorders like they're just it 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 is such a, a you know unique a sort of a bespoke uh, you know condition that it's different for everybody and I think you know this the listener actually posted a, a funny graphic of an elephant and a whole bunch of doctors who are all looking at different pieces of the elephant very closely like this is a trunk and this is a tail and none of them are saying this is an elephant and and that right. I I actually think that that's apropos of of what we're trying to do which is. Let's look at the trunk and let's look at the tail. And then based on your experience as a listener living with ADHD, if those resources give you the ability to shine a bigger light on the elephant that is your ADHD, so much the better. Then then we have right. accomplished our goal, uh, our objective for bringing you more people to, to look at and more strategies to approach your life with ADHD. So uh, we had a, a great discussion, I think, online. And, and um, uh, I really appreciate the the contribution because it's, it is important. I, I thought about, you know, there are podcasts that we could do, we could change the entire nature of the show. And instead of doing every week a, a topic, instead we say, okay, we're going to 12 episodes and only focus on RSD. And that's going to be season two. The first season is like 500 episodes. The second season is 12. And all we do is RSD <laughs> with everybody who talks about right. RSD and focus only on RSD. But in a sense, we're also, we're doing the same thing. We're just looking at the right. trunk. And uh, I, so yeah. I, I don't know how we could ever accomplish a unifying theory of the singularity, a ADHD theory, but, uh, you know, we're just going to keep keep plugging away, doing our very best to to. Well, and help. one of the things I did t definitely take out of it is that, uh, you know, we can we can certainly make sure we're making the connections like we're doing with the show. Mm -hmm. These are the connections that we saw within these we, with these guests and, and what the topics were that they were talking about. And, um, you know, that was something that I got out of it, too, is definitely let's maybe we need to talk a little bit more about what those connections are when we are doing a theme yeah. type of um series of shows and again i have to say november and december are going to be a little cuckoo so do not be <laughs> expecting that from us uh it, there's uh just a lot of kind of random things we're throwing in there at the end of the year but they're all really good things yeah. and i think that that's what pete you're saying is we're trying to do our best we're trying to uh give our listeners different perspectives other than just for me and you and that is what's so nice about having these guests is they are experts and they research this day in and day out. They've been in the field for such a long time. They've seen so many things and it is such an honor to have them come on our show yeah. and uh, give, give their little bits of wisdom, you know, in a 25, 30 minute period of time. So I, I appreciate it. All of them. So one last thing that I want to bring up before we wrap up is that Danny Donovan was one of our last guests in October, maybe She's beginning of wonderful. November. Yes. yes. And she was a wonderful guest and absolutely brilliant in her illustrations of how to explain and think of ADHD. And it was so great to hear her talk about her story and what an inspiration she is. There were little nuggets in that conversation that just were great, you know, being the, the perfectionism when she was talking about, you know, really working on not being that perfectionist and, and I mean, just so many wonderful things. I loved having her on here and, uh, we didn't get a lot of feedback because her show just went live not even a week ago. Right, right. right. So. As we record this right feedback <laughs> yeah. show, her show is not live now. It'll go live tomorrow no. as we record this. So we have no feedback right. from Danny Donovan yet. So but, maybe uh, we will maybe in November we will when in we November. have like wacky yeah. episodes. Yeah. yeah. So, but, but uh, <laughs> great thanks to Danny because she is, she's terrific. And I love her approach, the, the sort of emotional response to living creatively. And, uh, you know, how does that relate to the ADHD experience and, and letting go creative works into the world? I thought it was just just really, uh, it's great. really special. And what an, is she sort of becoming an unlikely hero, a voice of ADHD and very, very quickly. And so what does that sort of overnight responsibility look like? And uh, I, I think she's really terrific. So uh, 
Uh, it's It's been a great month. Thank you to everybody who has uh, taken part to send feedback to just straight up subscribe and listen to the show. We appreciate every single one of you for your time and your attention. And uh, on behalf of Nikki Kinzer, I'm Pete Wright. We'll catch you <laughs> crazy November right here on crazy Taking November. Control, the ADHD <laughs> podcast. <laughs> <laughs>